In today's lab, we will determine the relative electron affinity of three different halogens. Electron affinity is, essentially, how much a molecule wants an electron. So when we mix two halogens together, along with an extra electron, the halogen with the higher electron affinity will take the extra electron. So for example, if we mix molecular bromine, Br2, and ionic iodide, I minus, we are mixing the elements bromine and iodine along with an extra electron, which is the minus sign on the iodine. If iodine has the higher electron affinity, if it wants the electron more, it will keep the electron and we will end up with exactly what we started with, bromine molecules and iodide ions. But if bromine has the higher electron affinity, it will take the electron from the iodine and we will end up with iodine molecules and Br minus bromide ions. So by doing the experiment and looking for which one ends up with the electron, we can see which one had the higher electron affinity. If iodine has the higher electron affinity, it will end up with the electron. If bromine has the higher electron affinity, it will end up with the electron. The colored bottles labeled iodine, chlorine, and bromine are in molecular form, I2, Cl2, and Br2. Make sure to know which halogen is which color. The iodine is pinkish purple, you can see that up at the top. The chlorine is pretty colorless, and the bromine is orange. The clear bottles labeled KCl, KBr, and Ki are potassium chloride, potassium bromide, and potassium iodide. These are the ionic forms of the halogens. You cannot add an ion by itself, so it has to be part of a neutral molecule. So what we really want from these is the Cl minus, the Br minus, and the I minus. The potassium is just along for the ride, and we can ignore it for our experiment. It's important to do this experiment in a fume hood. Never remove the test tubes from the hood unless they're tightly capped, and leave all the original halogen containers in the hood throughout the experiment. Okay, so first we'll choose two experiments to mix, one in molecular form and one in ionic form. I'm using bromine molecules and iodide ions. In the hood, place five to 10 drops of each in a test tube. Now cap the test tube and shake it up to allow the halogens to react. This is when the higher electron affinity halogen is taking the electron. All right, now remove the cap in the hood and add five to 10 drops of mineral oil and cap your test tube, shake it up, and now with the cap on, you can return to your lab bench for observation. What you should see is two distinct layers in your test tube, the oil layer and the water layer. The molecular halogen will be in the oil layer and the ionic halogen will be in the water layer. This is due to polarity, which we may not have covered yet, so you can just trust me. The oil layer will be on top, and that is where you should see the color of one of the molecular halogens. So if the top layer is pinkish purple, then iodine is in the oil layer. If it, there's no color in the top layer, then chlorine must be there, and if you see orange, then bromine is in the top layer. Remember that the halogen that ends up as a molecule, the one you'll see in that oil layer, is the one with the lower electron affinity. The other halogen must be in the water layer in ionic form. And remember, those were all colorless, so we don't need to look for a color here. But whichever halogen it is, is the one with the higher electron affinity. After you've completed all your possible combinations, you should have six total combinations, six total test tubes. You don't have to combine, for example, molecular iodine with ionic iodine. You just need to combine the different halogens together. You should be able to draw conclusions about which one has the highest, the middle, and the lowest electron affinity for each of these elements. When you're finished, you can return all of your samples to the hood, empty them in the waste container, and then leave the test tubes in the appropriately marked container in the hood.